Hello everyone and welcome to the Michigan Science Center. I'm Siham, this is Spud, and this is Toto. And we're gonna go talk with Dr. Tanya Matthews about this wonderful facility, the Michigan Science Center, and we are going to do some exploring with our WDHT staff here. Angela, Stan, and Bob are with us, and we're gonna have some fun. So come on, let's go see what's here. We're here at the Michigan Science Center with President and CEO, Dr. Tanya Matthews, and we're gonna talk about this exciting place. I feel like a kid again. <laughs> Dr. Matthews, thank you for being with us, and thank you for having us here at the Michigan Science Center today. Absolutely, so happy to have you in the building and see that glow that we always <laughs> see when folks come into the Science Center. A lot of new things going on. We're actually seated uh, in front of our new interactive wall, um, and this wall actually <laughs> is the covering for the amazing 4D Experience Theater uh, that we just opened, the new Toyota Engineering Theater that just opened this summer. So the fourth dimension is the theater itself. So I tell people, see the hurricane, feel the hurricane, see the cow, smell the cow. <laughs> so that is how that experience worked. And right now we are premiering on National Geographic's Extreme Weather in 4D. Uh, it's the first time it's ever been able to be shown in that format, so we're excited. Uh -oh. about that um, and then after that we expect folks to get excited and want to build and create things we've got the new stem playground which is just open and this is our space designed to make failure fun so we put all kinds of challenges in there that are designed to not be possible the very first time and give visitors of all ages the opportunity to experience the joy of not getting right <laughs> so things like the Grand Air Paper Plane Challenge. Um, I did not know there were so many ways to make paper airplanes, but there are. And then we have challenge rings, you have to get them through. We have uh, wind tunnels with uh, sailboats to try to get them to navigate in a straight line, in a gale. So these kinds of experiences make innovation and innovation and um, experimentation fun even though you can't get it right the first time. It's one of the ways we really partner with schools and educators and parents to teach that kind of resilience in kids. So as a kid, I can see how much fun somebody mm -hmm. would have in here, but what do you offer as adults in terms of the educational experience? Right. Um, is, it, is it at that level? Absolutely. So one, I think there's always something for all of us to learn. Um, and two, there's a kid inside all of us. There is a kid inside <laughs> all of us, but you know there's a little bit of geek or what I call psi curious. Mm -hmm. um, and so after watching that, we actually started a 21 and up series here at the Michigan Science Center. So third Thursdays, uh, the Science Center goes 21 and up. And we come up with different themes oh. and different occasions. Yes, there is a bar and there's also a DJ <laughs> All right. uh, to add some ambiance there. Drinks and there. music to attract. Absolutely. And one of the things, we're also creating programming that requires parents. So there are ways that you can do that. So things may be too tall. It may be a two-part program, so you need a short person and a really tall person in order to build whatever we're actually getting you to explore. So we also do some multi-generational programming. And we often get requests, hey, do you teach that for adults? So we're thinking about coding programs and all those different kinds of things. And of course, there's the IMAX theater and oh, the planetarium, yes. which has always been all ages. Um, and we had more than a thousand people uh, in our uh, space to watch the American total solar eclipse with us. Yes. And that, of course, um, was exciting. everyone, kids, adults geeks, non-geeks, to experience that with the Science Center. That's, a, that's, that's exciting. I remember you had a butterfly exhibit We did, a while yes, ago. That was yes, yes, yes. Way yes. too cool, way <laughs> too cool. <laughs> Very much so. And trying to bring all of those different kinds of things, intimate spaces and experiences that you can touch and see and feel and explore. And we're learning to take cues from our audiences about the types of things that we bring in to allow folks to explore. Beautiful. You are going to be hosting the fourth city to host yes. a new exhibit coming into the Michigan Science Center, mm -hmm. which is very exciting, yes. 1001 Inventions. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about that. So we are the fourth American city. It's been to more than 30 cities all over the world. Um, and we are hosting the American re-premiere of 1001 Inventions. It is this amazing, um, nearly um, 1,900 square foot uh, exhibit 
on a thousand year era in Muslim civilization referred to as the golden age of yes. innovation, one of the many golden ages in human history. So everything from your eyeglasses to your cell phone Cameras. to the number zero uh, can be traced back to this period. But in classic science center form, it's interactive. Um, and we're talking about the women and men who got really creative um, during um, this period of time where this was the center of the world if you wanted to innovate or to invent something. So we're very excited um, to be able to be uh, the American host as it starts its American tour again. That is very exciting. And, and through this exhibit, mm -hmm. we're going to realize exactly how we're living today in Absolutely. the future and the things that we use. So very much mm -hmm. still very, very, very pertinent to today. Yes. And it comes October 7th, right? It comes on October 7th and we will have it through the beginning of the new year. So we'll have it through January 7th. Um, and we expect people to come and be surprised. It's your classic exhibit, but we also have actors and actresses who will be roaming the building Ooh, um, in different exciting. characters and Star personas. Sighting. Yes, from the exhibition. We've got some community partners that will get to hold pieces of the exhibit um, during the run of the exhibition. And of course, I think we may have a Twitter challenge or two coming up as part of all of the conversation that we're gonna start with my one big question. Are we on the verge of yet another golden age of innovation? And if we are, why not Greater Detroit? Absolutely, why not? Absolutely, <laughs> why not? this is the hub, this is the place to be. Absolutely. Um, so if people wanted to learn more about mm -hmm. the exhibit and what's going on, they can go to the website, which is? Absolutely, go to our website, www.mi-sci.org. Wonderful, so they can find out the upcoming information about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So will you take us around and tell us bit about a couple of the exhibits here? Sure, as long as you only ask me questions, I know the answer to. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> Between the two of us, we'll figure we'll it figure out. We'll figure it out. All right, so let's go. Okay. So, Dr. Matthews. Yes. So, force equals mass times acceleration. Tell us about that. <laughs> yes. Tell us so about this. So, this is one of those formulas that you always have to learn in school and just sort of memorize it. But imagine being young and trying to understand density, right? This is this is a, a topic that you don't quite get. Sure. So, for example, we have this uh, ex exhibit here. One of these discs is made out of steel, and one of them is made out of aluminum. aluminum. And so, density makes a huge difference. I'm trying to turn both of these as fast as I can, but clearly the one mm -hmm. with aluminum will go faster. So you can see that, you can feel that, you can touch it, even on your so fingers, it's and heavy. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to combine weight, mass, density, and then trying to explain that you can use the same amount of force to make something move faster, which is the acceleration, for a lot of us it helps to be able to see it rather than just memorize uh, F equals M times A. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so hands on. I, I love this yes. thing too. This, yes. is, this is way too cool. So this uh, that you're playing with right now reminds me of a game I had as a kid. Tip, tip it. it. Okay, so we would do that. But each of our three spokes has a different set of weights on it. So if you're ever trying to balance this, you can feel your body moving from left to right as there's more pull on the left side than there is on the right side. Of course, this is the kind of thing we only let staff member and adult <laughs> actually get in this device, but it's another way of actually being able to feel what it is you're trying to, to master. There you go. So a lot of different things happening around here for uh, shows and so it's a whole day affair at the it's Science Center. It's a whole day and a lot of people talk about putting art inside of STEM and actually the, the art that the Science Center uses most often is the performing art. So we have several theater spaces and the announcement we were just listening to was about our live science stage. So we'll have folks actually on stage bringing in visitors to do their own experiments in front of a crowd. Wow. So <laughs> exhibits, the IMAX, yes. hands-on, this is the place to be, especially for kids and adults. Especially for kids and adults. I think we have to remember that our kids reflect us. So if we're a little tentative about math and science, they will be a little right. tentative about math and science. And then there's the course, the opposite, which is that as kids grow up and they just want to be different from you, so our engineer moms and dads need our help too <laughs> to make what they love seem cool enough for their kids to also think about engaging with it as a career or just something they know really well. Really quick, you turn five in December. 
correct? We do. We turn five years old, Michigan and you Science know five-year-olds are bold and impetuous, so that's what the Science Center is hoping to be. Absolutely. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much for, um, for telling us about this, and we're going to go and explore a little bit, too, and, and find out <laughs> more stuff about science and, uh, and educate ourselves, and you're right, and especially girls. We want the girls to come in to the Michigan Science Center because this is about innovation. Thank you so much, Dr. Matthews, for You're being welcome. with us. You're welcome. Thank you guys for coming by. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna walk around and find out what's going on.